Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the synchronization of a stable multivibrator. In the previous video, we have seen the synchronization for a sweep circuit like UJT relaxation oscillator. Now, in this video, how to synchronize? We are going to see how to synchronize the output of an stable multivibrator. Synchronization is nothing but what we are making the time periods of two signals to be equal. Uh, nothing but uh, we are giving an external signal here. We are giving an external signal. Okay, I will tell where we are applying the external signal. We are giving an external signal. That external signal is having a time period. Let it be that pulse is having a time period TP, and this stable multivibrator is having a standard frequency or time period of oscillations like T naught. Now we are making the T naught to be equal to TP. Okay, that means it may be T naught may be equal to TP or T naught may be equal to 2TP, 3TP, 4TP and so on. In general, we are making T naught is equal to N times the pulse period TP. T naught is the standard oscillations of this particular circuit where whatever we are taking, let it be a sweep circuit or a UJT relaxation oscillator or any type of multivibrator. That we are making to be equal to N times the pulse period. Okay, now we know the basic operation of this stable multivibrator. In the concept of multivibrators, I have explained the operation of a stable multivibrator. In the stable multivibrator, there are two unstable states. Okay, uh, there are actually three different types of multivibrators a stable multivibrator, monostable multivibrator, and bistable multivibrator. A stable means no stable state. A stable means there is no stable state either of the output voltages like even at the collector or even at the collector 1 or collector 2. And monostable multivibrator means one stable state is there, one quasi stable state is there. But whereas in the bistable multivibrator both are both are stable states. Okay. So what we are doing here is actually in the stable multivibrator we do not need any external triggering pulse because both the both the outputs okay actually uh, we are taking four different outputs in a stable multivibrator we will consider vc1 vc2 vb1 vb2 all these are four different output voltages we consider in general for any type of multivibrators at both the transistors collectors or at the both the transistors bases. In a stable multivibrator, all these are quasi stable states. Quasi stable states. All these are having quasi stables. That is nothing but temporary stable states. Even if you do not give any external triggering pulse, they are automatically changing their states from one state to another state. Okay, that is the meaning of quasi stable state. We do not need any external triggering pulse to change the state of the particular transistor. Automatically, transistor comes into on, off, on, off, on, off. After a certain time period, that will be keep on rotating. Okay, that is the purpose of a stable multivibrator. That means it is a self-generating circuit. We can also say an stable multivibrator is a self-generating circuit automatically without any external signal. It is the circuit itself external without any external signal. We are, it, it can directly generate oscillations at a period like T naught. Now, the concept here is if we are applying some negative pulses at base 2 or collector 1, see here. If we are applying some positive pulse at base 2 or base 2 we are applying means indirectly we are applying at the collector 1 because collector and base are coupled together. Collector of one transistor, base of another transistor are connected together, coupled together. Okay, similarly positive pulses at emitter 2 here. Okay, so here we are applying negative pulses. Sorry, here we are applying negative pulses. Negative pulses at base 2 or collector 1 or positive pulses, positive pulses at emitter 2, then Q2 conducts. 
okay if you are going to suppose let us assume that this transistor is in on state this transistor is in off state okay so when we are taking a situation when we are taking a situation such that q1 it comes out of cutoff region and q2 is in on state okay let us consider this is in on state and this is in off state okay for our consideration let us assume q1 is in off state q2 is in on state then if you are giving intentionally okay before the transistor automatically change its state if you are intentionally giving a negative pulse at the base 2 or some positive pulse at this emitter that means we are bringing the transistor to off state intentionally deliberately we are doing that okay that means if you are applying some external pulse here a negative pulse or here a positive pulse then we can change the state of this particular transistor q2 this is the way how you are changing the state what happens if you are intentionally changing the state automatically the period of oscillations will be varied compared to the original period of oscillations okay now i am going to show you see uh, assume q1 is in off state q2 is in on state so if negative pulse at base 2 or positive pulse at emitter 2 any one of this either this one or this one because we need to break that voltage we need to break that junction then transistor q2 comes into off state this results this results change in period of change in the period of oscillations okay now see here see this is base 1 waveform this is base 2 waveform see clearly observe clearly this is base 1 waveform base 2 waveform here we are working with the base of this transistor because the transistors are by default they are changing their states see why I, I am not considering collector means the transistors are by default they are able to changing their states after certain time okay but here we are applying some negative or positive pulses to the transistors to make the transistors to other states before its premature time see see here consider the same situation first transistor is in off state consider the same situation first transistor is in off state second transistor is in on state what we are doing we are applying negative pulses forcibly we are bringing the transistor q2 into off state when we are applying negative pulse automatically what happens transistor q2 goes into off state and immediately because of this off state automatically q1 comes into on state okay that we can do one thing otherwise we can also do applying positive pulses at base 1 applying positive pulses at base 1 that will also change the status of q1 hope you understand we are making the transistor which is in on that to be off or the transistor which is in off to be on by applying positive pulses here or by applying negative pulses here so positive pulses should be applied to the transistor which is in off state and negative pulses should be applied to the transistor which is in on state to change their statuses okay and now see here in this first case what we are doing is this is the base 1 waveform and this is base 2 waveform okay in base 1 waveform it is normally if you 
know about a stable multi vibrator or multi vibrator concept generally this is the output waveform okay once uh, if you don't know go back to that multi vibrator concept and see how these waveforms came into existence okay so we are taking that waveform and actually the transistor has to the waveform of this base voltage has to go up to this level up to this level then again there will be a change in the output okay but see this is the t not t not is nothing but oscillator time period but here what is happening we are applying positive pulses to the base one positive pulses to the base one because the first transistor is in off state and we are applying positive pulses every time this particular amplitude where whichever i am applying that is being added to that added to that output base value base voltage see here it is added but it is not sufficient here it is added it is also not sufficient when it this sixth pulse is added to this value automatically it reaches vb set and the transistor comes into on state thereby q1 comes into on state until here it is in off state q1 is in off state okay it has to the capacitor which is there in the this particular part this is the capacitor this capacitor charges charges the uh, charging and discharging of the capacitors we are measuring at the base 1 and base 2 okay now suppose if it is the capacitor c1 if it is capacitor c2 c1 across c1 voltage that appears across b2 and voltage across c2 that, that appears across b1 okay this capacitor charges slowly and reaches vb set whenever it reaches vb set then transistor b1 comes into on state but before that we are applying additionally some positive voltage to make that transistor on okay so that is see the amplitude of this particular sixth pulse is added to the value which is occurred by that time so automatically that value this value addition is sufficient to make the transistor on so automatically transistor because it reaches vb set so automatically transistor q1 comes into on state but actually it should be done at this particular value okay so prematurely we are changing the status of the transistor so uh, uh, t0 is the original value but now the time will be changed to ts okay whenever the transistor q1 comes into on state and automatically q2 goes into off state that's why automatically at the particular same state it changes its state this is regarding the positive pulses this is regarding the positive pulses regarding positive pulses positive pulses at bases at base 1 okay now see here negative pulses at both the bases this is regarding negative pulse at bases so regarding negative pulse so negative pulse where we need to apply i told you already negative pulse should be applied to the transistor which is in on state see here it is applied negative peak this negative peak is sufficient to make the transistor off see here it is this is the negative pulse this is the negative pulse okay it has to charge up to this value but whenever it reaches this negative value whichever it is added here automatically it comes into on state okay same concept here also we are doing with respect to negative as i told you here whichever the transistor is in on state whichever the transistor is in on state the base of that must be applied with negative pulse okay this is regarding negative pulses but if you are going for the positive pulses whichever the transistor is in off state the base of 
that must be applied with false to false okay so that is the importance of the application of false to or negative pulses so to change the original nature or original time period of oscillations of any type of oscillator okay thank you